you know, like, but I, I was just under that much shock. You know, at the time, I was sitting there thinking, oh my God, um, I think they just snoop, swooped on us and um, just let us know, ah, there's no justice in Cheltenham. <laughs> You know, like, don't expect professionalism off the police in Cheltenham, you know. You might have expected it for four or five years, but don't expect it anymore. And, um, I, I, honestly, I don't know. Well, I do know. When we've done the GCHQ audit... What, gents? How are you? All right. Uh, we've been called by the security staff here. Okay. We're concerned that you're... I don't want to stand behind. Yeah. Well, it depends why, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 There's no harm in telling me, is there? This is what auditors do, isn't it? We know all about the auditors, what they do. You're not giving any mistakes to you by telling them. What you're doing by telling them. Yeah. 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 As you understand, you know, yeah, that's why you're going to be yeah. I, I do know what the police powers are. Um, obviously, the reason I'm here is to rule out anything that shouldn't be happening. Yeah, can you help me out? Yes, please. I'm quite happy to do this. You said you're auditor. Uh, thank you. Um, what's Sorry, your intentions? Do you mind telling me? Yeah, you have to tell me. Just for public transparency. Yeah. No, really, it's. Um, I like, I've lived in Chatham for a while, mm. but before I moved here, I never even knew GC. I knew what MI5 was, but I never knew what GC was. And then since I've lived here, I've said to people, they're back to jobs here, I'm like, have you had any GCHQ? And they're like, no, what's that? I'm like, it's government headquarters, basically. Yeah, communication. Like, how can you not know what's in your own country? Do you know what I mean? So I think, you know... It's not like they try and find it, it, is it? Either. It's like, yeah. you can't really miss it. No. So, yeah, all right, chaps. No, no, no. The very next day, we come out of Tesco after buying cigarette papers and then um, we had the police officer accost us saying, oh, you were passing things over to each other. And um, I was quite rude to her. I go as well, what, we're making a ciggy? And she's like, oh, I never saw that. I'm like, you got no right to surveil law-abiding citizens. She's like, I never said I was. I'm like, well, off you go then. You all right? What are you up to? Auditing. For them? Doing auditing work. Auditing. What's that? It's where we collect data for public disclosure and transparency. Okay, have you got your camera on? Yeah. Can you put it down for me? No, this is my public public safety. Why would you think it needed for public safety? I don't know, you're just, you know, you're randomly getting out of your car there, and... Uh, you've just come out of the shop and you've just appeared. Yeah, the reason I did that is because you were handing over things, okay? We're making a ciggy. Cigarette, and, yeah. yeah. I didn't see that, obviously I can see it in your hand now, so I came over to check what you were handed over. No right to surveil law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. I didn't say you weren't. Okay? Obviously, I'm allowed to come over and talk to people, and that's what I did. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't have to talk to you. Didn't say you did. Yeah. You know, like, off you go by. You know, like, you're a bu your brother in us. You know, and uh, I, I said to Dips at the time, I'm like, yeah, you know why they've done that? Because um, they've taken pictures of us at GCHQ, and then they followed us, found out where we live, and they're um, they're keeping an eye on us, and they're trying to bully us now. But um, whether that be the case or just pure coincidence, I honestly don't know. But after the after this, like um, Dips looked up in Gloucestershire live. If there was armed response, looking for somebody with a knife on that night that we were accosted, and there's nothing in Gloucestershire live that even mentions it. So part of my brain is thinking they've just done it to be horrible to us. Um, so let me just read out my um, thing. So basically, I'd got in touch with Live Free. I mean, maybe I should have got in touch with Marty, but I think that it doesn't matter who I got in touch with. They're all the same people. They're all a gang of people, right? It's, what is it, Pinnock Media. And um, so I got in touch with Live Free because, uh, you know, I just... I knew if I phoned a solicitor, some solicitors are on side with the police and blah, 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 right? So I thought, I'll phone somebody that I know has got their heart in the right place. And, well, not phone somebody, but, you know, message somebody, <laughs> innit? And um, so I asked Live Free, and then he got in touch with me and gave me a lot of advice and that. 
and um, I'm still in touch with them through email and that. Now, let me just talk you through what I've done. He said to me to ring 101, asked to speak to a sergeant, which I did, and um, get him to review the body cam evidence and blah, 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 right? But this this is all online anyway. Uh, you know, forgive me if my memory is a bit shit. I've had to write everything down. Um, anyway, so I've, uh, I'll read out what I've wrote down. Um, spoke to Sergeant George of Cheltenham Station. Now, what he did was, he, he first he was trying to be um, elusive in trying to say um, he didn't know if there was an offence committed by the officer. So then I said to him, I'm like, look, mate, I'm not an idiot. When he went psychotic on me, it was because I said I was scared, alarmed and distressed. And he tried to speak over me. I'm like, no, no, no. Let me tell you how he responded. His response was alarmed and fucking distressed. I'll give you alarmed and fucking distressed. If you want to be an arsy little prick, you're going to get treated like one. Get off your bike and get up against that wall. We'll do it the hard way. Right? Now, when I was like, I don't pay taxes to have police officers treat me like that because they got a mistaken identity. And as for having a black jacket on, right? Uh, yeah, that's not enough. Info that's, that's fascism, right? Fascism is where you look at somebody and go, you don't look right, so I'm going to treat you like a prick regardless of what evidence I've got, you know? Um, you match the description. <laughs> well, you, you know what? It's a good job that I'm not foreign wearing a turban because at the end of the day, that would mean I could be pulled left, right and centre, right, whenever, just because I'm wearing the same religious costume, right? Now, I was wearing a black jacket, which is the most common colour in the entire world for attire, Right? The, every other colour is like, oh, oh, you're trying to express yourself. Right? You know? <laughs> um, and I said this, I'm like, that's, that's not a reason. You have to have multiple grounds. Looking like someone, I didn't even look like anyone. It was just my jacket. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. Um, Dips at the time had said to the officers, oh, there's somebody down there acting dodgy as fuck. But they didn't care. They really didn't care. That I think they thought, oh, oh, a couple of innocent looking people, oh, they'd be easy to arrest them. I don't think they care where they got the, the arrest from, to be honest. I don't think they wanted to deal with somebody that might stab them. Anyway, so I'll crack on with this. So I spoke to him, Sergeant George of Cheltenham Station. And um, at first he was trying to be elusive. And when I told him outright, I know the law, I know full well this is misconduct. He said to me, it, he looked, he, he, then he looked at it again and he's like, oh, I think I've identified it. Yeah, that's, that's um, definitely not right. But as it's firearms officers present, I can't give you the body cam evidence because um, they don't have to identify to the public unless they've been found to do something wrong. So he said he'd refer it on to the Fired Arms Supervisional Officer, PC personally. It might not be PC, it's probably SO, Supervisional Officer. But, yeah, yeah. Supervisional Officer, personally, right? I don't know why I put PC in, I think, because, you know, I'm just stupid, right? To review the body cams of his Fired Arms team, right? And he's of Gloucester Station. Now... Supervisional officer, parsley. Well, Sergeant George said that it'd probably be about two, three days because of turnover before parsley could phone me, right? But he phoned me that night at one in the morning. Now, part of my brain saying it's not completely rude because the offence happened at the same time, so maybe he thought I would be awake. But my attitude is, I'd just gone through a lot of stress. I, I have seizures and that, so lack of sleep causes a seizure. And because um, you're not getting enough oxygen, etc., to your brain, right? And um, basically, I was sleeping. So I've woke up in the morning to a private phone call at 104 in the morning. I thought, who's that? Can only be police. Nobody, nobody with any respect would phone me at that time in the morning. Everybody that knows me is like, unless, unless I'm really, really close to you, don't dare phone me after 12, because you'll be phoning like a gremlin, right? Um, anyway, so um, I phoned 101 again during the day, 
Uh, I said to them, I'm like, look, I've had a phone call here at one o four in the morning. Is is this your officer? And now the woman I spoke to was like, I don't think our officers would phone at that time. You know, that's um, that's unprofessional. <clears throat> and then I was like, can you just look on the file? Just in case, and she's like, well, if he did phone last night, it's unlikely he's put it on the file so soon. I don't know why. I mean, you would think that it'd be the first port of call. You know, it's pretty much admitting that they're not professional and they don't do things properly. But um, who I spoke to was a woman called Tasman. Um, I've got more notes here, so I think I've got the name of the first receptionist I spoke to as well. But I might not. Because I'm autistic, and this is what they do, they like messing with people. Blah, 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 blah. So this would be when I spoke to the dude. Yeah, okay, I don't have the initial 101 person's name. That doesn't really matter. She treated it with courtesy, I think. So, um, yeah, I phoned the 101 again. And I was like, look, she said, yeah, it was um, um, his shift pattern is from 11 at night till 6 in the morning. And um, so that's the only time he can phone you. And I said to her, I goes, look, can you get the sergeant to phone me back or either of the two of them, right? Uh, you know, just so I can get the firearms officer to phone me back. Um, I don't mind. If I know I'm going to be phoned at this time at night, I'll stay awake. So last night I did, I said I stayed awake till six in the morning to the point I went, what a fucking joke. You know, my eyes are falling out of my head with, like, being sleepy. Like, I, I was getting up in that, and I was sort of, you know, I felt like I was going to black out, to be honest, because um, I'm under a lot of stress, isn't it? You know, my, my friend just died, and um, really, I should be grieving, but instead, I'm getting police harassment, and then they're not even dealing with it in a professional way. I think legally, it's classed as manifest error, in Black's Law, it says it's a, com a complete disregard of case facts and the a applicable rule or law as an indisputable error of judgment. So so basically, I mean, it's a sim I said to them, I goes, listen, at the end of the day, if the tables were turned and I, I done something like this to somebody, I wouldn't be sitting doing what I want. I would be in a prison cell, right, or, or you know, a police cell you know, on my way to being dealt with as a criminal, right? It's as simple as it gets. There's not one rule for us and another for them. I guarantee the officer that attacked me is still on duty now.